that'll do it from Crypto.com on this Sunday afternoon. Cleveland wins their eighth game of the year. And LeBron, for the first time as a Laker, loses to the Cleveland Cavaliers. One week later. Let's get to some news on the stars that didn't play. LeBron missed his second straight game with a strained left adductor suffered against the Clippers. Kyrie Irving's suspension continued as he's now missed six straight games, but plans to return to lineup soon. Man, the NBA sure looks different in 2022, and by that, we gotta go back to the 2017 NBA Finals. Yeah, back then, things were wild. Yeah, yeah. It's the matchup most NBA fans expected. It's the matchup many NBA fans wanted to see. A blockbuster NBA Finals matchup of epic proportion featuring all the stars. The Cavs won it in 2016 with Kyrie's shot. And then KD's shot in Game 3 of both Finals series clinches it. And since then, we have yet to see these guys in the bright lights except for LeBron in 2020. And now the Cavs are way better without LeBron. That was special. That will go down in the all-time greatest performances in Finals history. How did the Cavs go from having their two premier scores be such dominant forces in the NBA to now having a rejuvenated young core that is quite frankly way better than the, both the Lakers and the Nets are. Yeah, we got to go through this whole story of how, you know, these guys ended up where they're at and how the Cavs put their cards on the table and bet against these three players and ultimately they're winning right now. So Griff, you moved on from what happened at the end of your time in Cleveland. So the first piece of the dice to fall was David Griffin in 2017, where he ended up mutually parting ways with the Cavs. This is a GM, by the way, that, you know, when he fired David Blatt in 2015, yeah, he had some things to say about how the narrative's out there. I mean, they're just simply false. I, I've got a problem in general with this narrative, and those of you that have been with us for a while under, understand this. LeBron plays for this team and he's the leader of this team and he desperately wants to bring a championship to this team. LeBron doesn't run this organization. LeBron is about this organization and he is of this organization and he's a, of our community. But uh, this narrative that somehow we're taking direction from him, it's just not fair. Obviously, we all know the meme going around of LeBron being the GM. Now, obviously, he's not the one directly calling the shots, right? But it's not too far-fetched to think. I mean, just looking at how LeBron reacted to David Griffin, the news of him leaving, he was rather upset with this. And with a new GM coming in, I'm not sure if LeBron was able to influence him in the same ways. And it seemed like the Cavs, I mean, they were going in a rather new direction. Kyrie Irving going to Boston, Isaiah Thomas going to Cleveland along with some other players and a draft pick. Now Kyrie Irving, he was disgruntled with being teammates with LeBron James and of course that led to the trade to where he was a Celtic now. And this trade would include for the Cleveland Cavaliers acquiring Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, Ante Zizic and the 2018 first round draft pick that would become relevant soon enough. Now I'm pretty sure you guys understand the deal that this was. I mean Kyrie Irving was a pivotal part of the 2016 run. Cleveland's lost 8 of 11, but the one guy that's not worried is LeBron James. After going on a hot stretch, winning 18 of 19 early in the season, the Cavaliers would look awful, losing games that they should not be losing, and obviously LeBron James in the game having a plus minus of minus 39. Give a damn about no damn plus minus. The guys have agendas, we gotta get rid of our agendas and play the right way. The losing onslaught would continue against the Thunder, against the Rockets, it didn't matter who they played. You have players like Dwayne Wade and the players only mean calling out Isaiah Thomas and obviously the drama, I mean they needed to change. It don't look like it. I want eight on national television. They should take us off every national televised game for the rest of the season. And so the changes had to happen. And Kobe Altman, as you know, a new GM, first year being a GM, trades a lot of their assets, a lot of the pieces they had. And now LeBron James is given a new cast of teammates to play with. And obviously, you had some younger guys coming in like Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. from the Lakers. And then they did a free team deal with the Utah Jazz and the Sacramento Kings where they got George Hill and Rodney Hood. And those picks that they got from the Kyrie Irving trade coming in handy here in these deals. Obviously, you have Dwayne Wade also being shipped back to Miami for a pick. And so now the Cavaliers, they have younger assets. And now they got a better chance of going to the finals and winning a championship which is what LeBron was set out to do in these playoffs where he, he would go on the improbable run I mean just carrying the load and really playing the hero of most of these games where 
he would look like the best player in the game every time he stepped on the court. But of course, the Dynastic Warriors won it all. Yeah! Now in the draft, the Cavs did get Colin Sexton, and that's what the first round pick they got from the Nets in that trade, but they would lose the biggest piece they had. LeBron is a Laker. LeBron James is a Los Angeles Laker for what ought to occupy the final act of his NBA story. Four year, $154 million, a max deal. And so now the future of the Cavs franchise had to be given to one Kevin Love. Love signed a four year, $120 million extension with the Cavs. John, is this still a mistake? I like Kevin Love uh, personally, and I like him as a player, but I don't like the length of this deal. Mm. As someone who uh, is a Laker fan, uh, we gave Luol Deng four years. We gave Timofey Mozgov four years. Roster flexibility, Mace, is key, and yeah. tying up a guy with an injury history like Kevin's for four years is yeah. really risky. It, and yeah, they were right to you know, be concerned because the Cleveland Cavaliers ended up becoming a dumpster fire of a team, having one of the worst records in the NBA. And obviously Kevin Love being injured did not help their case, okay? You have Darius Garland being picked in 2019 with the fifth pick that they had during the lottery, okay? And you got in 2020, I mean, they had the worst record in the NBA. They didn't even make the bubble, right? They, this team was on a downward trend. And yeah, as you go, Kuro being picked fifth, but you still had the expectation for the Cavs that yeah, this is gonna be a slow rebuild as they're reshuffling assets. Jordan Clarkson gets traded to the Utah Jazz and you know they get Dante Exum and a couple of second round picks. But you know, that's that's not gonna do much for you. And obviously this Cleveland Cavaliers team, yeah, they're not looking so good right now. It was a good game. I got a warm welcome from all the fans. It was it was nice. I love the energy here. It was insane. Now the Cavs and the Jazz, as Barbie Marks suggests here, they've built quite a re relationship over the last couple of years and last November you know they shipped off Alec Burks to Cleveland in exchange for Cal Culver. so the Utah Jazz and the Cavaliers you're going to see those two names pop up frequently in this video and of course now we got to move on to the Brooklyn Nets who have a couple of young guys that I'm pretty sure the Cavaliers would love to have on their roster <laughs> And it seemed like the Nets, I mean, they wanted to win it all. They wanted to win it now. And so, you know, you see James Harden and Kevin Durant working out together. It seemed like, you know, rumors were spreading that, you know, perhaps James Harden and Kevin Durant would team up one day, right? But that's not where the rumors would end, right? You have James Harden being reported to have thrown a ball at Jay Sean Tate during a practice. Yeah, it seems like there is tension in the Houston Rockets locker room. And you have Kevin Durant here playing PR for not just himself, but for James Harden on his part as well. Is there anything that you could share with us about that conversation? And, and then do you relay that James wants to play with the Nets to Sean as soon as you hear something like that? I don't know where you're making these stories up that me and, and James talked about any of this that'll work out. Like, I don't know where that came from. And James is a friend of mine, but I let the front office handle all of that stuff. I was just so focused on working out. And now we see the climax of the Rockets' tension with the Marcus Cousin coming out saying this. Just the approach to the training camp, uh, showing up the way he did, uh, the antics off the court. I mean, the disrespect started way before. James Harden clearly had enough and did not want to be on this Rockets team. It's not good enough. Um, you know, we just, we don't, we don't, uh, obviously chemistry, talent-wise, just everything, and it was clear. Um, and yeah, the confirmation of James Harden being a net. Where, yeah, it was true. They wanted to be together, Katie and Harden. And guess what? They were together now. The Cavaliers, they received ample, and I mean ample amounts of pieces for this trade. In a 14 deal, the Cavaliers shipped off a first round pick and Dotty Exum, and they got in return Jared Allen and Torin Prince. And so the Nets trio now, they were going to try to win it all, win the East, and win the championship in the NBA with this lineup that stacked. But unfortunately, trouble would meet them, injuries, and just quite frankly, bad luck. It was a cursed franchise. It looked like he came down on that ankle, landing on Giannis's foot. In the locker room after a, appearing to injure his right hamstring. Now keep in mind, Harden lost 21 games this season due to a right hamstring injury. And we all know of the famous shot that KD hit in the Bucks series that 
you know, had his feet not been as big as it was, it would have been a three pointer and perhaps they would have won the game seven. But unfortunately, Kevin Durant was off six in overtime, missing a crucial game winner. And now the Cavaliers, when we go to them, yeah, they're not doing so well, but they're getting pieces. They're slowly building something with Rubio getting acquired now in a trade with Torin Prince. They also got a second round pick out of that trade, which, you know, it's a nice pick to have. And the Cavaliers in the draft, I mean, yeah, they didn't have such a good record. So the lottery, they were very kind and they gave him the third pick, which they used on Evan. Mobley. I mean, this dude was a game changer in college. You could see it here. He had the capabilities of being a franchise guy. And now we got to go to Lord Markinen, where he got traded to the Cavs in a free team deal, where the Cavs, they had to give away Larry Nance Jr. and a future second round pick. And this Cavaliers team is going big. Three seven footers in the lineup? It's honestly insane. Now, the GM, Kobe Altman, he said he has the proven ability to play multiple positions, Markinen does, and stretch the floor from the perimeter. And at 24 years old, we believe that his best basketball is in front of him. The three, got ball in the air, shovels up, marketing! Marketing, catch and shoot, hey! I can't lie to you, this free man seven foot lineup, which, you know, they can interchange with having Kevin Love in there as well. I mean, this was looking really good. This Cavaliers team was turning things around and unfortunately bad things would happen. Colin Sexton suffered a torn meniscus in the team's win against the Knicks on Sunday. They knew it was an injury. I don't think anybody thought it was going to be this bad. He unfortunately is slated to now not play for the rest of the season, having to recover from that torn meniscus. Yeah, this was bad. The Sexton thing is a short-term problem, certainly, but, but you're right, they're good today and they're young, and there's really a sense that they can be competitive going forward. This is by far the brightest that things have looked in Cleveland without LeBron in my, uh, what, more than a decade and a half covering the NBA. Right off the gates, you had standout performances from, you know, their center rookie, Evan Mobley. I mean, he was looking already like a shoe-in for rookie of the year at this point, and not a lot of people would tell you that he was not a shoo for that award. I mean, he was just marvelous. But unfortunately, the Cavs kept running into trouble. Flex one to Rubio. Rubio to the foul line. <laughs> slipped awkwardly. Yeah, he slipped, yeah. Mm. So now the Cavs lose two guards to injuries, and yeah, they had to recoup, trading away Denzel Valentine to get a seasoned vet at the point guard position, Rajon Rondo. Right before the final shot, Rajon Rondo gathered everybody around, Campy. This guy has been a Cavalier for three games. Man, he's just what the doctor ordered. And, you know, the Cavaliers, they needed more punch on offense. And somehow, this would fall in line with, you know, a trajectory of a certain player that was involved in that James Harden trade. And it was interesting seeing his story come up. I was in the hospital for maybe three or four hours. So I knew something was going on, but I didn't know what it was. And one of the docs, he called me and he was basically like, I just want to let you know you won't be traveling with the team today. We found something in your MRI. Then he told me, he was like, you know, you have a tumor on your left kidney. And I was like, well, I just froze. I didn't know what to say. I was, I was stunned. With that James Harden trade basically saving his life. Now he was hooping, playing the best basketball in Indiana. This is a great story. Two more for Laverne. He's got 42. The next day. We have a trade a few days ahead of Thursday's trade deadline. Our own Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting that the Pacers are sending Karis Levert to Cleveland. This is just insane. I ain't never seen some shit like this, okay? Karis Levert getting picked up from the Pacers to the Cavaliers. And a couple days later, he, as cold-blooded as he is, ends up cooking the Pacers, the team he was on a couple days prior. The two possession lead, 114, 110. Laverne, Allen, same move, same move. And this Cavaliers, they were no joke. I mean, just listen to how LeBron James apparently, he should go back there. Is he better off remaining committed to LA or finding somewhere else to play? I think finding somewhere else, and I'll even go as far mm. as to say the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, when you look at Darius Garland, when you look at Evan Mobley, when you look at a Jared Allen, the acquisition of a Karis LeVert, and what have you, I don't think there's any denying that. LeBron's Lakers were awful last season, getting eliminated from the play-in. Not even just the playoffs. They didn't get to a temp seed. And yeah, this Lakers team was awful. And LeBron James, it seemed like, yeah, he would do very well to go to Cleveland. Now, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they were in the play-in and playing. 
Durant going to work, rises up again, and that one's good. But the Cavs couldn't beat the Nets who had KD and Kyrie. And of course, this Cavs team would have to save their season playing against the Hawks in a close game with two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yeah, could they do it? Unfortunately not. Trey Young was just sensational in this game, having a outstanding performance in the second half. Okungu with a key block here. And just look at this. 30 points in the second half after only scoring six. How special has Trey Young been though, Mike, in the second half? Even though the Brooklyn Nets beat the Cavaliers, and even though the Cavaliers didn't even make the playoffs, the Nets, they did get swept by the Celtics. And during the offseason, yeah, a lot of drama went into. But for the Cavs, I mean, they recouped Ricky Rubio, signed him to a three-year deal. For the Cavs, yeah, their future and their outlook was rather promising. You get a guy like Donovan Mitchell, one of the best pick and roll guys in the business. He's great in the clutch, he's late game, and that's what this team was losing. Now, what did I tell you about the relationship the Cavs built with the Jazz? Well, it came in handy as Donovan Mitchell was traded to the Cavs and where, you know, they had to give a lot of pieces away. But if you look at, you know, what the Utah Jazz received in the Rudy Gobert trade, yeah, you would see that, yeah, the Cavaliers actually got a lot less for a, you know, arguably a better player, a more impactful player on offense, of course. And Donovan Mitchell, yeah, this was interesting. And just a testament to how great Kobe Altman has been. First of all, this is an absolute squad. All-star, all-star, top pick, future all-star, all-star. And if you want to see what this trade did for this Cavs team, I mean, it got Darius Garland to be, you know, just so cheerful. So I'm getting texts during the workout, and everybody's just telling like, call me, call me. So after my workout, I call, and uh, no, Kobe actually calls me. Kobe Altman, man, I'm telling you, he's the brains behind a lot of what we're seeing in this Cavs team. And of course, he got handsomely rewarded this offseason, and for good reason. I mean, just betting against having guys like LeBron and Kyrie, betting against the Nets in that James Harden trade, acquiring key pieces, young pieces throughout it. I mean, this was just a team that really played their cards right. You've seen a lot of great fourth quarter performances, but 27 points, 51 point game. How do you describe what you saw? Uh, special, uh, especially, you know, all things considered, right? Um, but that's what Darius is capable of. He shot the ball extremely well from three. He got to his spots, um, you know, and kept us you know, right there in the game, gave us a chance at the end, and that's all you can ask for. But incredible performance master class by Darius and you know we're hoping for for many more of those out of him so um that was just beautiful 